Although this clip showing Bluetooth water is CGI, this fountain I made is 100% real. How does it work? Well, first you have to modify some of the source code to get past the law of mass conservation. Just kidding, this fountain doesn't violate any universal laws, but you should be able to tell it's not free falling water just by looking at the shape of the stream. Just like when balls drop, water accelerates due to gravity, meaning the water at the bottom is faster than the top. Therefore, the diameter of this circular stream can't be constant as it looks here. To see why, imagine that you're tracking how much water passes through this cross section at the top in one second. Perhaps it's this much. If you know the water is moving faster at the bottom, but you're assuming the same cross-sectional area, that would mean more water is passing through at the bottom. You can't just generate water out of nowhere, which is why the cross-sectional area is instead smaller, and the total volume of water passing through each area per second is the same. Now you can hopefully see why these types of fountains aren't exactly magic, but how do they work? Rather than explain, let me just show you how I made it and it should become clear. After plugging in my hot glue gun, because it always takes forever, I grabbed a half-inch clear plastic tube, this one's polycarbonate. I lost the half-inch nozzle for this submersible pump when I made my fruit punch fountain, so I used some hot glue to attach the tube snugly. Since I need roughly equal flow around the entire exterior of the tube, I couldn't just glue the tube to the spigot right away. First I had to make some small holes as close to the top as possible so the water doesn't spray everywhere. I used various tools instead of a drill, not because I wanted it to take 50 times longer for no reason, but rather that I'm not in my usual setup so I don't have a drill. The carving was taking forever, so I decided to heat up a push pin, but I'm skipping over that part because you shouldn't do that, please just stick to a drill. Anyway, after I made the holes, I was ready to glue it. I actually had to do this a few times to get the right amount of glue to be strong enough to hold up the spigot without blocking the holes. Rather than hot glue, which is very thick and not strong, use a less stupid glue and it will make your life easier. After placing some decorative rocks in the water, I realized they were ashier than a certain basketball player's legs, so I needed to rinse them first. By the way, make sure to block the drain if you do something like this over a sink with a garbage disposal. Next, I cut a cord-sized opening in the pot. I chose higher up in case the hot glue wouldn't reseal well, spoiler it doesn't, because then I would have enough water for the fountain to still work. After feeding the cord through and resealing, I centered the pump, attached the tube, and added rocks all around it. After filling it with water, it was ready to go and definitely worth making. Never mind. 